Hi, everyone. Um, this is Paul here in a cold and chilly, wet Somerset West down here in the Western Cape. Um, I think we're going to get a bit of snow, but <clears throat> hopefully we'll get some gliding done on the weekend. Um, Francois asked me just to give a brief overview of um, what my gliding club is about and uh, what, what it entails, just a brief overview. So I'm going to try and um, kind of stick to 20 minutes, just give a brief overview. And then um, after that, we can have some q and I see there's a chat box there. So if you've got any questions, I'll be quite happy to answer them as well. And I can show you, show you live if you've got any questions about it. Um, just a bit of brief um, history. Um, we started this in about 2013 yeah, at, at uh, Cape Gliding Club. And it was really uh, due to the fact that there was quite an onerous, and that was the start of the, the paperwork that CAA was starting to push onto us. So um, I started just putting a system together just to kind of help our club. And it, and it grew from there. And um, we started working with Soaring Society as well, because they said, well, it could actually benefit the other clubs. And uh, it's kind of grown from there into a fairly large system that can cater completely for everything to do with the managing of gliding club. Because um, it essentially con um, manages our complete club um, right from, from the start to the end, right up even into pastel. So for those that are probably not sure if a system can work, um, I think our club here in, in the Cape can attest to it that um, it, it can. I think the biggest thing is, is to have a bit of a mind shift to say, well, you know what, we, we kind of force into this by CAA and all the legislation around it. So we might as well just try and embrace it. Anyways, uh, let me start with no further ado. Um, you see to the, the, the URL is my gliding club. So most of you probably know that already. And um, when you get presented with a the, with the page, then you just log in. And after a login, you'll get your, your landing page. Um, now, the whole philosophy behind <clears throat> my gliding club with me being a kind of a developer and uh, getting frustrated with systems that, that are developed out there, I wanted to implement something that you could get to with not more than two clicks, mouse clicks. So um, hopefully this has achieved that. Essentially, you'd be able to get to any aspect of the system with not more than two mouse clicks. And we've also tried to put as much info in a screen as possible so you don't spend your life clicking around everything. So the landing page here is essentially a, a summary of what's kind of happening in the club and also with your account. Um, and the main thing is uh, when you log in, you'll get a notification. So those of you, the members that are using it already will, will notice that um, if you have your profile set up with reminders and everything, it'll remind you um, on activities. For example, in this one, it says your next duty is in three days time, instructor renewal three days time. This is apart, uh, apart from the emails uh, that get sent out periodically. Um, in, the, in the screen here, you have uh, basically a summary of your flights. Um, there's a nice new members, um, which is nice. So before you go to the club on the weekend, just log in and you can see the new members. So if you do meet them on the flight line, you can introduce yourself and you, you know them by name already. Um, it gives you aircraft status. So if you're flying club gliders, um, and uh, here you can see Hotel Victor is grounded, for example, and I'm flying Hotel Victor as a student, then there's no point in going out uh, and flying that glider. So it kind of gives you a, a good overview. There's a club notices section here um, that basically um, club uh, admin can actually send notices out either through a, a ticker here at the top, you can see latest news, maintenance day 19th of October, or you can have um, information here, like uh, various uh, notices or red tags or safety bulletins with uh, more information. Um, you, you also got your latest duty roster. So if you implement a duty roster, you'll be able to see who's on duty this uh, coming weekend. We have uh, webcams out at the club so you can actually hook up your club webcams here. So if you log in, you can actually see what the, what's going on at the airfield. Um, so I'm going to just uh, focus on kind of the, the aspects that are pertinent uh, immediately, like uh, timesheets, for example, how to log your flights, um, your logbooks. Uh, we can look at the instructors and training files, and then briefly look at the, the admin side. Um, 
On the timesheet screen, um, as you can see, basically all the information is in one screen. Um, and you can see the different headers and that. If we look at um, on the left-hand side here, you have your, your months. So it's very easy to go and see the flights in October. You can add a new flight entry there or um, details. Uh, let me just go back again, sorry. Don't know how you go back. There we go. Um, here's a complete summary of the of the timesheets, um, various actions here. I'll show you a live demo on, on what they are. Um, but basically standard timesheet information, uh, pilot, instructor, pupils, the, the, the aircraft, what type of flight it is, um, and the times. And this is a nice, uh, easy summary to see. If you want to export this out, you can just click on the PDF or Excel. And whatever you filtered here at the top, it'll export that out. So it's very quickly to get, say, the day's um, flights if, if you want to. Um, typically, when you, when you go out to the club, uh, we, have a, we used to have a, a manual author sheet. Um, and this is a, a requirement from CAA or a, on the training side of things. All students and instructors have to sign a declaration. Um, on an author sheet. So we implemented an electronic order sheet, author sheet. Uh, quite simple. I'll show you how it works, but here's the screen. Basically, it's just saying that you're self-declaring that you adhere to these aspects. For example, I've got a current um, pilot license for what I'm flying. Um, I've got a medical. I'm flying an aircraft that I'm happy with. It's airworthy. Um, my account is in good standing with the club, uh, for example and um, that I understand the responsibilities. Um, and this is essentially what the author sheet does when you sign it on, on paper. Um, if we look at the uh, timesheet um, screen itself, um, there's just uh, certain fields and these, these have evolved over, over years to basically um, capture just the fields that are needed without a, a burden of too many, too much information. So you've got flight, uh, flight details. Everything is from drop downs. And the reason why it's done like that is so you don't make mistakes. Uh, so you don't type in the wrong aircraft registration, for example, or, or the wrong surname. So everything is um, done from drop downs and those are all set up by the club admin. Um, <clears throat> pilot details, flight times, um, now there's the flight times, uh, also TMG um, info. So if you fly TMG, you can actually track your Hobbs uh, information, number of landings and the fuel that you've, you've, you've used. Um, visitors info, um, my gliding club supports visitors uh, in keeping track of them. I'll touch on it briefly um, on the live screen. And uh, the admin side, where you basically say, um, who's the flight charged to, for example, the, the pilot in charge or Facts or split it or visit or ignore, you know, various uh, bits of information there for the admin. Uh, so that's an overview of the timesheets. Um, the member's profile is quite, uh, quite critical or key. It holds all the information to do with myself as a pilot, um, apart from the uh, login details here and access details. Um, here are renewal dates. Um, we'll go down to the renewals. Um, if you're diligent enough to actually fill in the renewal uh, dates, um, the system reminds you uh, two weeks beforehand, no, sorry, a month and a half beforehand, 30 days before, a week before, and then it kind of reminds you every day for seven days afterwards um, if it's due. So uh, it kind of helps you to remember all those uh, pesky renewals that have to be done. <clears throat> On the uh, CFI side, uh, we call it the CFI, but basically it's just uh, to do with your actual um, flight um, credentials and that, for example, your license number, flying, instructor brevi, whether you're an instructor, tug pilot, winch driver. Um, that's just really detail that can be used in the system. It's, uh, there's also a personal logbook available. And what this personal logbook is, is it enables you to capture flights. And you've got an option to link the timesheet to, to your logbook. And if you link the timesheet to your logbook, um, if a timesheet uh, gets created or an entry, for a flight gets created and your name is on that entry, it'll automatically appear in your logbook. Um, that's over and above allowing you to 
add your own entries. So for example, you typically link it to your um, timesheets and all the club flying will automatically appear. But if you go fly <clears throat> away camps or um, flying away, uh, you can manually enter the flight as well. <clears throat> Um, there's a comprehensive email notification uh, facility in my gliding club, and I've just um, outlined some of the most common used ones. <clears throat> uh, let me just go back. I'm assuming that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm assuming that uh, we're still live and working and going because I haven't heard from Brendan. Okay, thanks, Brendan. He's just whispered in my ear. <clears throat> um, all right, email notifications. This is quite handy because uh, essentially just about every um, activity in my gliding club has got an email notification if you set it up. And uh, for example, I've mentioned the, the due date reminders, uh, student training files. Uh, if you're a student, <coughs> um, there's a heavy onerous on training file documentation. So if you uh, finish a flight in a day, an email and you finish your exercise, an email will get sent to the instructor to tell him that you've finished your, your uh, entry. The instructor will fill it in, you'll approve it, it'll reply, and you close that off. So it's it's fairly easy process to, to kind of fill the stuff in. Certainly <clears throat> quick and easier than the paper. Um, <clears throat> visitor bookings. My gliding club allows you to uh, allow your visitors to book from your website and um, they can fill in certain details um, and once they make the booking it can get sent to uh, approve people to approve it and do the necessary arrangements for instructors for PAXs and things like that. Uh, you can also book facilities at the club so if you've got uh, club huts that you uh, <clears throat> rent out or, or allow for bookings it can do that with emails going. Um, you can also book aircraft at the Cape Gliding Club, we've got all the students um, uh, from the club perspective anyway. Anyone who wants to fly club aircraft <clears throat> will essentially book a <clears throat> club aircraft for, um, for a flying day. And if you look here, um, further down, there's a, in this email that goes out, uh, a rostered reminder, <clears throat> there it tells you which students have, have um, made their bookings. So at least the instructor now, and this uh, Mike Pasco, for example, is, is scheduled for the 22nd of May, which is this coming Saturday. Um, <clears throat> he knows that uh, Sophia, Julian, and Jonathan will most probably pitch up for a, for a flight. Um, he can even look at their logbook online to see where they're at and prepare beforehand if he, if he wants to. Uh, when you receive your duty roster reminder, this comes uh, two weeks before it comes seven days before and two days before. Um, and that's only gets sent if you haven't um, confirmed it. And there's a convenient button there that you click. If you click that, it's like these um, unsubscribe buttons in these lists. It's very easy. You just click it and it's already, <clears throat> you don't need to do anything. Once you click it, it says, okay, I've, I've accepted it. Yeah, you can see that Mike and Findlay, <clears throat> who's a tech pilot, have accepted. So they're well aware it's their duty but uh, Vaughan hasn't accepted yet um, or confirmed. So he might be a no, a no show or not, depending. Today's Thursday, tonight's Thursday, so he might uh, book or confirm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for example, here's the aircraft renewal reminders. So those that are responsible for maintenance and uh, everything to do with the club. Um, <clears throat> if you're diligent about putting in all your ATFs and radio license weighable, um, weight and balance uh, dates, It'll remind you 30 days before or even two months before with the, with the details of um, <clears throat> what, uh, <clears throat> what needs to be due. You can see um, this is an oldish one, <clears throat> but the radio license we bought five years in advance. So that's why it's 835. But you can see the ATF expired, but the weight and balance was still due. So <clears throat> it's handy reminders that, that are available. Okay, so I've um, breezed along quite quickly. Um, Brendan, just a heads up, or speed or right? Yeah, 
Okay, thanks. <laughs> I've got a speak in my left here and Brennan is just uh, giving me feedback on, because he's running the streaming. So I haven't done this before. It's first time for me. Okay, um, the training files, the bane of our lives. <clears throat> uh, for those of you who've been gliding for years, myself, 30 years, um, you know, it's nothing like the old days. We had a little small book that the DCA issued and uh, you could do your radio license in the morning and virtually go solo in the afternoon, you know, so it's not like that anymore. So this is our attempt to at least, uh, <clears throat> you know, do the best of a bad situation and, and try and implement it. And we've been quite successful in our club. It's, it's no negotiations. Everything gets done through my gliding club, all the training flights at least. <clears throat> um, and when the audit comes around, then we just present, uh, we get the system to print out the information that's needed to be printed out. And uh, we've been doing that for a few years now, and uh, it's, it's, it's worked well for us. <clears throat> I believe the CAA is uh, in the process or has informally or formally approved uh, my gliding club as kind of the ATO system to use. And uh, I think we're moving to a point where <clears throat> If you use the, the My Gliding Club in your club um, from a training perspective, then you automatically get approved uh, from a safe, from an audit point of view because uh, there's processes in My Gliding Club that will force you to do things, <clears throat> and those if you follow those processes, then you kind of adhere to all the regulations. Um, now, <clears throat> how the training file works is uh, it, everything um, is central to the timesheet. So at the Cape Gliding Club, we've got an automatic logging system using the OGN FLAM system. <clears throat> it works brilliantly and it's absolutely reliable. Um, I don't think we've ever had a, if your FLAM's working, uh, we've never had a flight that's been missed or, or whatever. So as the, as the tug combination and glider combination takes off, within a <clears throat> minute after that, the entry is sitting in my gliding club, the flight uh, entry um, with the pertinent details. And then once the uh, uh, timesheets are, are finished, um, <clears throat> and I'll show you just briefly how to close that loop, you mark the flight as an instructional flight. And as soon as you mark it instructional, <coughs> the, um, the entry will appear in your training file, in the training file against your name and against the instructor who can see all the flights, all the, the training files. Um, basic uh, pertinent information is just, you know, standard flight date to the instructors were pupils, um, uh, the briefing time, what the flying time was. That flying time is pulled from your timesheet. So you, you literally don't have to enter anything into your training file uh, on this aspect. The only, only thing you need to enter is the, are the exercises here. Um, where you basically pull from a drop down, but I'll show you that. You can obviously in most of the screens, you can export to Excel or PDF. Uh, most of the screens are, are what you can see in my gliding club. <clears throat> there you can see a tick mark for notify instructor and instructor reply. When you fill in your training file, you click a button to say notify instructor. Um, instructors often forget. So what this does is uh, when you finish your exercise, it'll send them an email and say, listen, uh, you need to check it out and approve it. <clears throat> and here you can see the instructors being notified. And the tick mark saying instructor reply uh, means that the instructor has looked through it, he's approved it, and he's happy. Once he's, once he's approved it, it gets locked um, and you can't change it again. And um, that is basically um, what has done it for us on the CAA side, because then they say, well, there's no chance of, um, fraudulently going back and doing it. Um, in practice, uh, some of the guys just keep it open for a while until they're 100% sure. <laughs> so, and then before the audit comes, there's a flurry of uh, approvals that come through. But anyways. Um, okay, in the training file itself, uh, very easy. There's the pertinent information and there's your exercises and all you do is you just pull it from drop down. So it's, it's very easy to actually <clears throat> select the exercises that uh, that you did for for that particular flight. Okay. Um,
Okay, so there's a question that's come through. Um, will the instructor, does the instructor fill the rating in or does the student fill it in? Uh, basically, the, the student fills it in because um, <clears throat> we've, got, we've got our little green books. So you, you, you have your little training book and an instructor, whether he puts a rating there or not, that's optional. But in our club, <clears throat> we get the student to fill in everything and then the instructor verifies it. So essentially what the instructor is saying is when he signs it off, He's happy with whatever's been captured there. Okay, Dukes, um, you can attach documents to your, your uh, training exercise here. So there's a screen for documents. So let's say you are, for example, doing a renewal or a conversion or something. In our club, uh, we have to write a, a um, kind of an exam or a test or something and we must prove it and attach documents, you can attach it here uh, should, you, uh, should you need to. Um, for those of you that are listening that are instructors, um, <clears throat> you basically just, uh, once you've signed it off here, you say, yes, the student is proficient, I'm happy with it. You can even put a note here for your fellow instructors. And this isn't visible to the students or anyone else. It's just those that have got instructor access. So it's kind of a bit of a note to the next instructor. Okay, um, from an ATO perspective, um, this is the type of the stats that you can pull out of the system. Um, this was, um, this happened to actually be stats we pulled a few years back for, for you guys um, in the early days. But just to give an example of the type of information where you can have your um, uh, exercise details, you know, um, who the instructors are, how much instruction they've been doing. This was a report for instructors, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Or oh, no, Ivan, Tony, Hugo, uh, maybe there's a students, not sure. Anyway, so the, the point of it is, is uh, the data is available to be pulled into spreadsheets or pivots or graphs or anything. Makes it quite easy for um, end of the year audits or uh, AGMs where you have to present stats to your members. And we basically do that every year. Um, nothing's manual anymore. It's all pulled from my gliding club. <clears throat> um, the CFI or um, uh, CFI has got a lot of information available to him. For example, he can actually see a list of people, students, even members um, that kind of have expired medicals, don't have renewals, expired um, TMG licenses, whatever. Um, <laughs> Because the system is uh, captures all the information, um, you can actually glean any bit of information out that you want in any format. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've met, um, mentioned the um, renewals and the emails. Um, <clears throat> this is um, just kind of briefly. Um, Francois has actually taken a, quite an active interest in my gliding club, and he's given it a good uh, go, uh, which is great. Um, and he's kind of drawn up just a kind of a little uh, flow chart um, for you guys at, uh, at Michalis, um, you know, what the process is. Now, it looks complicated, but uh, this, this first left section here is really just more admin. So it's more committee members and admin side of things. Typically, they can, um, <clears throat> the committee member or admin will receive a new, uh, new member who registers online, checks that the credentials are fine. You can see here. Um, and then he can actually, um, your committee can approve that person. So although you can register online, you don't um, get approved yet. It gets vetted by um, committee. And the reason why we did that was because it's a public um, uh, registration. You don't want any Tom, Dick and Harry just uh, kind of getting automatically approved to your system. So um, I think that's been the biggest challenge that I've had in supporting my gliding club over the years. Uh, I get um, asked, you know, I've registered, but I don't see myself in the system. And that's the reason why. So um, if you could just spread the word, um, that'll be great. <clears throat> um, so once a member's part of the system, now he's going to start flying. Um, he can pitch up on the day. Um, there's a, um, here's the, the central here is kind of the day activity. And all it is, is uh, you just sign the author sheet. Uh, the duty officer can check. Um, whether all the pilots that are there or stepping in a glider has actually signed the author sheet. 
Um, and that authorship, uh, we can link uh, certain verification to that. For example, is his medical due or has, has it expired? Is his account uh, in, in the red? Uh, he may not fly, you know, various things. So that information is available. Um, so, and then you go and fly. Um, essentially, uh, during the day, um, my gliding club, we use the, the OGN logger, but um, there is an offline Excel spreadsheet that you can generate and you can fill it in at the flight line or at the end of the day um, <clears throat> with um, all the details and then you can import it back into my gliding club. So you don't necessarily need to be in my gliding club to capture the timesheets as, as well. Um, so here you can either key, uh, complete it online um, or you can complete it offline and upload it. Uh, the key thing is uh, whether uh, what type of flight it is. Um, now at, at here at Cape Gliding Club, we, we log every single flight. Club members, um, you know, non-club members, uh, anyone who flies, we log it. And we use that for stat purposes and for billing and aero stuff and everything else. Um, <clears throat> you essentially mark it as an instructional flight or a normal or a PAX intra flight. Uh, depending on the red route or the green route, uh, the red route uh, is for instruction. <clears throat> uh, the student will go and um, fill in his flight. Uh, then uh, the training file, once he's done that, he puts his exercises in and it'll notify the instructor. The instructor will receive it. Yeah, in this section, he will receive it. He will adjust it as he sees fit. He'll make comments. And once he's happy, he signs it off. Um, and uh, the system will reply to the student to say the instructor signed it off. <clears throat> um, and then basically with the training file, you've got a record of the training details available online. Now, the ATO section in my gliding club's got a ton of reports. So come audit time, we just simply print it out. So we print out uh, kind of medicals, you know, medical expiries, um, instructors information, whether they're valid, you know, whether they've attended a course, things like that. So it's all printed out uh, ready for the, the inspector. Um, then if you're flying normally, it's a normal flight, it's a green one, basically it's a standard flight. And then the committee or the treasurer can actually attach costs onto that flight. So they can kind of build stuff and send it into Pastel or even just use my gliding club as a financial, basic financial system. <clears throat> committee members uh, can also draw many, many reports on, um, you know, kind of audits, income, member status. Yeah, you know, uh, there's, there's too much to, to mention. Okay, so that's basically, yeah, I've come to the end of that. Um, that's just giving you a brief overview. So I thought I'd just um, end off with um, just giving you uh, a live um, kind of just run around and then uh, just highlight a couple of other things that I haven't mentioned and then we can have some Q&A on that. So I'm logging in as myself. <laughs> so um, I'm an instructor and uh, admin or, or uh, admin person plus a, um, a normal flying uh, member. So there'll be quite a lot of info here that um, is a, a pertinent across the board. <clears throat> um, here's the timesheet. So as I said, on your landing page, you presented with um, not more than two clicks. So if I want timesheets, there's one click. So if I click there, I'll get into the timesheet. <clears throat> and if I want to add a new timesheet, there's my second click. So I'll click on that and I basically can fill in my timesheet details. So I can say what, what the launch method is. Um, this launch method gets used um, for costing. You know, you can have various costing for different launch methods. There's your flight date, aircraft details. There's the flight type. You got three, which is normal, instruction, or uh, intro packs. Um, <clears throat> now, if I, for example, uh, select um, an instruction, or a pack, sorry, if I select a packs, it opens up a visitor uh, section here and you can drop down and you can actually choose the visitor because don't forget we at the club have said that visitors may only come via uh, booking because then, then they'll book beforehand. We know how many are pitching on the day 
and their name will be here. So we select their name, and this is just for record purposes, <clears throat> um, how much money you, you receive from the fax, any admin details, and you press save, and that saves the flight. Obviously, you'll select the, the instructor, um, or whoever's uh, the P1, uh, which tug aircraft, and which is the tug, tug pilot. And these are all for stats. So um, I can pull a report in our club and say, I'll find out how many hours a certain tug pilot tugged for the year or since we've, we've started. That's, uh, that's how we can drill down. Um, so if we go back to that, so there's, um, sorry, that was one click and then two clicks. <clears throat> Now it defaults to the latest month, so you're always here on the on the latest uh, latest month. You can see that there was today's the twentieth. Yesterday, two two guys flew, and they flew in the wave. So we've hit the cold front today, so they probably flew in the wave yesterday. Just to give you an example, there's the OGN flight log. So um, I'll just go for the previous day. There you can see this comes from the OGN Flam system. Um, there's those two flights there. So you, you've always uh, got, the, uh, got the FLAM information on AGN and that's synchronized to the timesheets. And it's already pre-populated the names because uh, when you, if you own your glider, you say I'm the owner and my gliding club will automatically attach the name to that. So essentially these two entries here on the timesheet, no one touched anything in my gliding club. They just magically appeared. <clears throat> And uh, the, the takeoff landing and the, and the flight time, there's 440 hours. So Rudy flew <laughs> quite a few hours that day. Um, so um, just here, um, if, you, if you need to change a, a timesheet and you just go and merely click on the edit button, there's also a delete button. And there's also um, the flight failure or the timesheet, the daily timesheet. Um, so these are these are, are for a day you have a whole lot of flights, but for the day you've got a, a timesheet, and that timesheet is essentially here. And you can you can basically just fill in your timekeeper's information, tag tacker times if you want to, and it gives you the summary of all the flights for that day. Okay, um, I'll go back to this. Um, Right, just let me just show you the offline um, timesheet, just to show you how easy it is. You can create an offline timesheet for the day. Uh, so let's say for um, Saturday 22nd, <clears throat> I'll generate it. And then you can actually use this um, to actually capture your, your flights. You can see here, it's basically a standard Excel spreadsheet, but the thing is you just need to click here and you can actually select from the, from the members there. So everything is here. You don't need to remember who it was. You can select from there. You can fill in all this information. Um, let me just go 10, 10, and 10, 20, and 11. So there you can see it basically a 50, 50 minute flight, tug time was 10 minutes. It does totals at the bottom. So this is essentially your on the flight line uh, spreadsheet. If you fill this in, you can import this back into um, the timesheets by selecting import timesheet here. And you basically select your, um, your timesheet and it'll populate all the, where's the flight entries here? <clears throat> it'll basically populate all the flight entries here like like what you see here. So you can see it's uh, actually minimal my gliding club input and you can actually get a whole day's flying uh, captured there quite easily. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what it does is uh, everything is to do with the time. So if it finds a time that's identical, it'll override it. So um, if you've entered some manual entries here and you import it, actually, you know what? I'm, I must conf confirm that. I'm, I, I might've made it that it overrided for the day. I'll have to confirm. I did it such a long time ago, I can't quite remember. So it either, it either, um, it either overrides the, um, it will definitely override the same takeoff times. <clears throat> because that's the start of the, the, the book, the 
timesheet, or it'll uh, delete the whole lot and just import it purely from the spreadsheet. So I must confess, I can't quite remember. Uh, another handy feature is uh, you can import uh, IGC files here. So those, um, those pilots that kind of fly um, and, and have your IGC files every time, and you want your logbook, uh, personal logbook to be updated and used <clears throat> for your, under your profile, it's quite simple. All you do is you can actually just select a, an IGC file here. Let's see which one, I've got a couple of samples here. <clears throat> No, not that one. Let me get a better example. Uh, maybe that one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this was a flight uh, that um, someone took. I've just got a couple of sample IGC files here. But it's, you can see it's an IGC um, viewer. So if you pull your IGC file in, it'll show you your flight. You can see they, someone did a flight along the ridges all the way. I probably did about 600 Ks here on that day. That gives you uh, flight information. Uh, this was Kevin, Kevin Mitchell. Um, and so if you select Kevin Mitchell here, because uh, sometimes the names in your FLAM doesn't match up the names that are on the uh, My Gliding Club. So you confirm the pilot, and if you say save to timesheet, it'll, it'll basically add it to the um, timesheet here as, a, as an entry with all the details, with your name, the this, this takeoff and landing time, and airfield and what have you. So, so once again, if you've got a IGC file, you don't need to manually enter in, in your, your timesheet uh, entry. It does it for you. Um, just, to, just to mention, because uh, if you, if you, if you uh, have got a base station, a FLAM base station, um, you can actually have a FLAM tracking, which uh, <clears throat> it doesn't show anything here. But we've got uh, one, two, three um, base stations in the valley here. So we can essentially get a hundred kilometer radius <clears throat> and it, it tracks all, all the gliders. So we can see who's what and where, especially the students. Um, so that's quite handy. So that base station really is handy and it's not expensive to set up. <clears throat> it takes half your effort away from managing your, your timesheets. Okay, so that's basically the uh, timesheets. I don't think we need to do anything more on that. Um, just really on your profile, uh, I just want to mention the logbook. Um, under the profile here, um, essentially, it's that's everything to do with yourself as your member. So these will show all your flights that the system logs. You can see your training files, if you own any aircraft, uh, if you make bookings. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, just to give you an idea. Um, <clears throat> Let me just show you the logbook. So uh, this is my logbook. I actually, I've been using it since I started flying 30 years ago. Um, <clears throat> so I've just been uh, keeping track of it. Um, <clears throat> in the early years, we didn't have it. So before 2013, when, when my gliding club started, <clears throat> um, essentially um, I was manually, I just imported it. And then uh, for, since then, uh, my gliding club has, has essentially pulled in everything. So my logbook at the, when I do my two year renewal, I just go here and I export it into Excel and I, I add up the times and I submit that. So, because I know that um, <clears throat> the FLAM is 100% accurate and uh, it, it correlates with my, with my paper book. <clears throat> uh, legally speaking, you're allowed to keep an electronic book and you have to print it out every three months, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Just keep a printed copy. So you are legally allowed to keep a personal logbook. And as long as you, you periodically keep printed copies. Uh, yeah, so um, I think the other important thing is um, uh, the duty rosters. Uh, this helps a lot. Um, we use it completely. Um, essentially, you can actually put in your, your duty rosters and then the system will remind you for your duty, as we said. So, yeah, I can see, um, we can see who's on duty and you can essentially, I mean, to go and change a duty roster is quite easy. You can just, uh, oh, let me just go and see if I can change it here. No, it's been disabled. If I add a, okay, there I can add a duty on a duty date. Um, I could say, well, look, it's an all day. 
Um, you know, if you've got different uh, slots, um, different clubs, maybe have round robin GT pilots or something or GT officers. <clears throat> um, so you can actually keep track of your, your duties um, and it, it'll give you a nice, um, if you look here on the front, it uh, essentially tells you who's due. So these guys are on, on Sunday and uh, next week and for the next couple of weeks. So it's quite handy. Um, I'm just going to mention, uh, I just want to go back to the student, uh, the training file. For those of you that are instructors, um, this is quite a nice uh, instructor's portal where it basically gives you a summary um, <clears throat> of uh, student currency, for example, you know, who's flown what, when last they flew of your students. <clears throat> it, can, it, it can give you a list of uh, these are all outstanding training files. So that means either the student hasn't uh, notified the instructor or the instructor hasn't uh, completed it. Um, and the instructors can have an overview of all the all the students. So this essentially on the 16th of May, these are all the students that that flew or did instructional flights. If I go and um, let me go and see one that's been filled in here, you can see Kevin and um, Vaynant, they're quite diligent about their training file. You can see it's all completed. But if you have a look here, <clears throat> here's your, in, your um, training file information. Um, and yeah, you can see Vaynant, he did an aerito approach, fixer controls and landing. And the instructor <clears throat> confirmed it. And you can also actually sign it as well if you want to implement a, a paper, you know, really uh, close the loop there regarding that. Um, so it's quite easy. This, these these uh, items are already sitting here waiting for the, the students uh, to fill in based on the timesheet that, that ran. Um, any one of these things you can export to, to that. So if I look for 2021 and I want to go and see, um, let's say, um, island, um, all the islands here, and I can export this um, into say PDF. It'll give you a nice uh, formatted uh, list of all those entries, or you can export it into Excel. <clears throat> um, I think I'm probably trying to bring it to a close. Uh, I think um, we've, we've done that. Um, I'm not gonna go into the notices and that, that's for club admin um, largely. Brennan, I don't know if there's anything else you should, should touch on or Francois. Um, I don't want to overload everyone. Uh, no, Paul, I think you did very well. Thank you for all the information you gave us. We've just got one question from Lawrence. Um, he's asked about OLC integration. Um, can the system automatically output to OLC? Um, we haven't done it, but I'm sure I'm sure we can look at it. Um, uh, it, it, it reads IGC files, um, and I'm sure OLC actually reads IGC files. I'll have to find out what facilities OLC's got. And uh, I assume that um, members want to automatically lodge the, their flight uh, to OLC. I'm pretty sure it can be done automated. So if you load your, your IGC file as a timesheet, you can click a button and it can pull through to OLC. I'm pretty sure I'll find out and get back to you. Sorry, Brandon, can, can, can everyone hear you or, um, or is it just you? Okay. Okay. All right, perfect. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for the information. Um, and yeah, we hope to be using a lot more of the Mark Gliding Club in the future in uh, Michalis. Yeah, good luck. It, uh, it really, it's a bit of a learning curve in the beginning and a bit of a mind shift. But once you get going, it becomes second nature, genuinely. And you can ask any of our members. Um, it, it really takes a lot of the donkey work out of uh, a lot of the stuff. And uh, Francois is like really, he's um, latched onto it very, very, very well. And he already is pulling out stuff that I've forgotten that I'd done years ago. So he's, he's very clued up. So I think he'll be a good um, driving factor there for you. Thanks everyone. And um, 
Yeah.